so it is a hot one. It's 93 degrees right now and it's heading towards 100 degrees today, but it is harvest time. It's the most exciting day of the year, the day we get our honey. Hey, you gonna come help me? Yep. You excited? A little bit. <laughs> Are you scared? No, I just, I know it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot. So let's head out to the hives and then we'll go from there. We've been harvesting and selling our honey for the past four years but we've had issues keeping our bees alive late in the year due to varroa mites and wax moth infestations and lack of food for the bees each winter. So this year, we're doing things differently. I started working with other beekeepers in a community bee yard and communicating with mentors to learn from what I've done wrong in the past, and it's made all of the difference so far. With 15 hives and growing, we're doing one honey harvest now, and it's just the start as most of our hives are in year one, so we won't be touching their honey. So honey season 2023, let's do this. Okay, so because it's so hot, we're gonna use a shade to help with the heat because it's gonna be pretty miserable today. So Flow Hive sent me their caddy tool. This is pretty cool. It's got a place to put the smoker, the J-hook tool, a place for the brush, all my queen marking stuff. It's make it a lot easier to carry around from hive to hive. All right, so the goal today is to take some honey, but we're not gonna take some honey from every hive. Some of these are new this year, and so we're just trying to build up the strength of their hive this year, and then we'll take honey the next year. That's a difference from what we've done in the past. In the past, I've just raised them each year, taken some honey as it's been there, and I didn't realize how I was slowing down the strength and the growth of that hive. And so most of our Langstroth hives, that's these box hives, we're gonna check them today, but we're most likely not gonna take any honey from it unless they've gotten up into the supers, the, the upper, smaller box. We're gonna make sure that they have two deep boxes that are full. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we have five Langstroth hives, or the box hives. This is our newest one. The, this is the one we got rescued from the tree. Our red, yellow, blue, and purple hives that are horizontal or layens hives. And this hive right here, this purple hive, is our brand new hive this year. It's an extra long layens hive. We added it this year, and it's got 25 frames, where the other ones have 15 frames. And this one's been a lot of fun. They've actually, they're a split off the red and yellow hives. They were growing so fast early on that I had to split them into the blue and then the purple hives. And so they've all been known really well. I've seen lots of full frames of honey in there that we're gonna be able to take today. Okay, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time in these Langstroth but I do need to get in and just check them real quick. So these guys have a fully capped frame here in their second deep, but this is what they need to be able to survive. So I'm okay leaving that for them to make sure they can get through the winter. All right, so we're at the Red Hive. There's a bunch of bees outside that are bearding here. They're trying to keep the inside of the hive cool by keeping their heat outside. So I've been having problems with this hive all year. They've been really hot, and so that's why I've been doing the splits to try to keep their numbers down, because they usually get so big and massive in here. They fill it up and then they get really angry and aggressive to protect it. So let's hope that we can get through this and get our frames and get out without too much trouble. So these frames, they're about half capped, half uncapped, but this is so much honey, I think we'll be okay. Yes, some of the uncapped honey can end up crystallizing later on, but it can last for a pretty decent amount of time without crystallizing. And even if it does crystallize, all you have to do is heat it up. So the smoke causes them to eat honey because they think their hive's on fire. And so they're trying to eat up in case the hive burns down that they can survive to be, get to a new hive. This is a frame from a honey super. And so it takes about three of these to make one of those. And there's about eight to 10 frames. So one of these frames is about half of a honey super. It might look like I'm hurting the bees here, but I'm gently wiping them off the frame so I can take them back to the house and then I'll return with just the comb for them to reuse later tonight. Ooh, what a gorgeous frame, my goodness. It's amazing. So I'm gonna come back if we don't get much from the others, but I think we'll get plenty from the others. But I think I could have taken these two possibly if I really wanted to, but I think for the sake of this hive, they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got four over there. That leaves them with a little gap until I get that harvested and then I'll come bring them back. So we're here at our yellow hive. This one was going really well. It was our strongest hive to start the year. Lost their queen at one point. Thought they were short of queen, but then I just checked the other day and they've got a queen going again. So they've been getting really strong again. They're lazy. Yep. So unfortunately, I didn't get any capped honey to take from the yellow hive but I did get to watch this drone bee emerge. Drone bees are male bees that have only one job to do, mate with other queen bees outside the hive. So they don't serve a big purpose for their hive, 
but they do help with diversifying the genetics of bees, which is important. That's a brand new drone. All right, well, it's too hot to go back to the hives today. It's about 100 degrees and it is really hot inside this barn as well. So we're gonna start with these four frames and then we'll be able to get them back out to those hives tomorrow. So the first thing we have to do is uncap the wax. This is our honey extractor. We had to get a, an extra big one that could handle these lands frames. Now we've got a couple ways to do this. We've got a hot knife we've used in the past. We'll use that if we need to, but I saw a video somewhere where somebody used a heat gun to melt the wax that's capping the honey. And so we're gonna try that and see if that will work for us. No sleep when things run dry I'm empty I can't see I'm blinded by this concrete Is an easier way to do it? Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's flinging a little bit of honey, so... What do you think? Is that gonna work? That looks great. There's one side down. We've got one more side to do on here. How to move on without you, you, you. Without you, you, you. The goal is that we save the comb so that the bees can keep building and not have to rebuild all of the comb. But the first time we did it at full speed and it started to throw the comb to the edge, started to rip it up a little bit. We've got some that fell there all the way down at the bottom off that frame right there. This time Becky was able to run at a little bit slower speed, still get the honey out and it didn't tear it up. So if we don't run at full speed, I think we'll be all right. All right, so we're taking our three frames out. We've already done one there. So those frames are ready to go back right. to the bees. This is a paint strainer. You'll catch some of the bigger particles. All you gotta do is open that up. Woo! Because people like honey? I'm the only one I like honey. You're the only one that likes honey? Mm -hmm. No. Do you want some of the honey? Yes. Okay. We'll give you a jar, okay? Two jars. Two jars? Now yeah. you're just being greedy. <laughs> you're going to eat it all in one sitting? Yes. <sighs> That's a lot of honey, buddy. I don't like drink water. I don't like save them. No, twink them when it's dark. You want to eat some of the comb with the honey in it? Mm -hmm. Is that good? Mm -hmm. I'm just squeezing the last bit of honeycomb that we have that fell out. Squeezing every little bit of honey.
So everything we do here on the farm, everything we do here on the farm is private and protected. Well, with the exception of a few predators that we've been dealing with lately. So that's why I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark. So Surfshark is a VPN or a virtual private network that helps hide and protect all of your information and your internet activity from anyone who may be following what you do online. And I take that pretty serious here because everything we do for our business and social media is online. Jeez. Maybe you need access to popular websites when you're traveling in certain parts of the world. Maybe you're blocked from streaming sites in the country that you're in. Surfshark will help you change your virtual location and get connected. Shammy. <laughs> Thank you for that. Here's our Bielfelder hen. You get those creepy personalized ads? With Surfshark Search, you can search the web without being tracked by the search engine to avoid the personalized ads. And with Surfshark Alert, you can monitor your personal data online and get notified of your IDs, emails, credit cards, and passwords if they're being used with real-time notifications. Hey Barbie. So get protected today and get Surfshark with no risk and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just click the link in my description and enter the code WHOH for an exclusive discount and an extra three months for free. Oh yeah, that's good. That evening, I took the four frames back to the Red Hive so the bees would get their frames back to start collecting honey on again. And I was delightfully surprised that they remained calm, even though I didn't have my smoker with me. I put the frames back and pretty much didn't even notice I was there. I had to get that space back filled up in the hive because you can see they were kind of clogging it up, trying to figure out what to do with that, that bit of space in there. So we're out here for day two of our honey harvest. Day one could not have gotten better outside of not seeing our yellow hive queen, which we'll check here probably at the end of the, at the, end of the day. A little more calm down today. It's gonna get hot again. It's already in the low 90s, but it's, about half. it's pretty calm. So it's a little shaded and there's a little breeze. So bees are much calmer today. So let's get started on our last four and then maybe we'll get back into the yellow hive at the end. So we ended up getting two more honey frames from the blue hive and two from the purple hive. And the Lego Hive was doing exceptionally well. So I'm really excited to see how they do in winter this year. All right, and the other frame from this Purple Hive. A beautiful three-fourths capped frame. It looks really good. All right, so we're working on our thumbnail right now for this. So Becky's scraping the honey. We're gonna use the, the hot knife today. So go ahead and start scraping that. Why do you like working with bees? I think bees are fascinating. But you don't like honey? Nope. Is it just too sweet for you? Nope. Too sugar. Too much sugar? Uh-huh. That's so realistic, huh? <laughs> no, your fingers. No. Here, Joe. <laughs> All right, so you've seen us get the honey from the hive. You've seen uncapping the honey, using the extractor to drain the honey, filtering it multiple times into buckets. About four or five times we've filtered it, gotten it down to one bucket, and it, I weighed it. It's about 60 pounds worth of honey in here. Oh, way more than we've ever had before. And it was only from four hives, really only three hives. So next year, our plan is to grow all the hives that we currently have, which is 15 of them, Ooh. and get them through the winter, get them strong, and next year we'll have exponentially more honey. And so we've got some jars here. We've got 50 so far. I think it's gonna take somewhere between 150 to 200, so I've got more jars coming tomorrow. 
All right, the first jar of our 2023 honey season. Fifty jars of honey, all stacked up, and let's see how it's much. Like it's half. Oh full. yeah, there's still. So on these jars, we're writing White House on the Hill honey on this little tag, looping through a little string. We can you do a bow backwards. I think so, just like that. So lastly, I thought you guys might like to see how we do the packaging of the honey before we ship it to you. And so we actually have these little cellophane wraps that I'm gonna heat up and so that tightens up around the jar. That way the lid doesn't pop off during shipping. Then we put it into a box with some packing paper and it's all ready to go. Out. Okay, let's put the honey in. And that is our first package of honey that's gonna go out this year. Yeah. Just under 100 jars. We ended up bottling about 50 more jars today. And so we are now gonna have them available on our website, but hang on, because we have so few, it's limit one per customer. And our site's not set up to limit how many you buy. So if you buy eight of them, I'm gonna cancel the order and then you can order one if there's any still available. So please abide by the rules. Thank you so much for following along and enjoying our honey. Now you can go get some on our website. All right, so we're looking for the yellow hive queen. And there she is, I found her. It took me a little while to find her today. She's tough. So now I've got her right here in the queen clip. So now I've got her ready to mark right here. Now we've got her marked. We let her dry for a second here. And now we're ready to let her back down into the hive. All right, and now she's all set. So now it'll be much easier to find her and to know that she's one that we've already seen before in case she gets replaced. Oh, this piece is gonna be just for you, all right? You wanna try to grab it? Look at that eye. Oh my goodness. Take your first bite. Oh, it looks so good.